Hey guys, just before we start the video, I wanted to give you a little bit of context. So the guys from Roland America reached out to me and said, could we write an article based upon some of the videos that I've uploaded recently? And I'm like, sure. So you're about to watch the Zoom call slash interview that we did for the article. And uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can read it if you're interested or you can just simply watch this and you're going to get some extra bits of playing, a bit more chit chat. And uh, obviously I explain the concepts of how I came up with the video. Um, I'd just like to point out quickly, you may have noticed I put paid promotion. Some of you may be aware that I've worked on and off with Roland and Boss over the last 10 or 12 years. I have a wonderful relationship with them, great sense of loyalty. So time to time I get given gear and the gear in this video uh, has been given to me and I just want to make that clear. But that being said, I do hope you enjoy this casual bit of chit chat with some playing in there. Uh, here it is. So Alex Hutchings from Fusion and Jazz Originals to playing in Steve Wilson's band and Thriller Live. You are an eclectic musician. <laughs> Thanks, man. Of your prodigious output, it seems you're always creating. How's this last unique year, shall we say, been for you as a uh -huh. player? Yeah, interesting. You know, I think it's affected us all uh, in, in in a lot of different ways. Um, I've got a lot of friends, some of which have kind of retreated and some that have exploded creative, uh, creatively, you know, and I'm somewhere in between, you know, of course, it's uh, it's been a funny situation. But in this year, particularly, I've really in engaged my creativity a lot, you know, and and that's that's been wonderful. It was like a psychological shift. I just said, you know what, let's do this let's 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 you know utilize this time in the most positive way we can you know um and uh, i've just been you know outputting a lot like engaging my my youtube channel a great deal and um creating videos that hopefully people have been enjoying talking about my guitar heroes and um yeah and i've been having fun too just going on that journey you know and uh and just trying to be a creative player and person yeah it looks like it. You make it look effortless. It's not, um, it, it doesn't seem like there's, you even hit a bump. You just kind of keep creating and there's this sort of flow, which actually um, speaks to some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. So, okay. so the MC-707, um, you know, there's plenty of acoustic kit sounds and there are all kinds of stuff, but as a guitarist, what drives you to cross-pollinate? styles in such a non-traditional way like in in this these, these videos you recently put up you're using the mt707 and, and you're creating grooves that kind of um touch on drum and bass and hip-hop what where does this mashup mentality come from yeah well to be honest the whole thing uh started like um i'm really good friends with a chap named david arland which uh some of you guys may be familiar with and um we've been close friends for about a decade and He's really into the sort of dance uh, production side of music. He's also a fan of rock and all that kind of stuff. So we love, you know, all the Metallicas of the world and all that kind of stuff. But he's really great at producing. So when we've hung out, um, I've been somewhat influenced by listening to, you know, his work. He's like the expert on the Groovebox stuff, the MC series. And so I've really enjoyed watching him uh, create with that. And so how i came about uh, using this was that uh, my other friend dan from roland um was really intrigued to see what i would do with it you know um so he said look man would i would you be cool if i send you one have a play with it and see what you come up with so i think he was actually expecting me to play uh with the yeah the acoustic drum kits and from more of a fusion uh kind of standpoint but actually, for me, even though I, I do that stuff all the time, like I love rock music and fusion, jazz fusion. So I, I, I work with musicians playing that all the time. So t actually, to be honest, when I received this, I was interested in the in the dance kits and the, the synth sounds because uh, I love that kind of music. So I was drawn to to that side of, of, of this groove box, you know. It's, and it really, um... It really shows one of the comments um, on on your first video using the Groovebox was like, man, this sounds like Morello meets Jamiroquai yeah. with a side of Flat Eric, which is that sort of awesome techno track from the like 90s. He's just 
it's really just touching on all this stuff. And I think that that really that does speak to Hugh as a player. So onto the nuts and bolts of this integration, the way you move through the scenes um, mm. with the MC707 is, is really dazzling. It's, it's very fluid and effortless. W would you walk us through what you're doing with your setup? I understand that you're using a Boss MS3. That's right. Let me grab my camera. Please. If I may. So I've got a funny little phaser effect on here. Yeah, so, so actually the videos that I put up recently, I decided to use um, the Boss MS3, which is something that I've been playing around with for, for a few years. Uh, a lot of people know that I've I've worked with Boss for many years, so I, I'm lucky that I get to see all the new stuff when it comes out. And uh, I was doing a little tour of Australia and uh, New Zealand, actually, fortunately for me, very lucky. And it was around the time that the MS3 uh, came out. So I really got to spend some time with it and, uh, and mess around with it. So I thought, actually, wouldn't it be fun to connect it via MIDI and... Uh, you know, experiment with controlling it from from the device. So the last video I put up, I was trying to encourage guitar players to understand that MIDI is not all about, you know, um, triggering sounds. You can actually trigger um, like events or, you know, you can interact with stuff. And I was talking a bit about time based uh, delays and, and that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so how I've got it set up, the, so the MS3 is plugged into my amp here, and then I've got a MIDI cable out of there into the to the MC. So what that does is it allows me to, you'll see on the video if, if you, to get more in depth, but um, I can slow the tempos down. I can, like you mentioned, the, the scenes like verse, chorus, you know, all that kind of stuff. I can decide real time to uh, to go to like verse for 25 bars if I want and then suddenly drop to the chorus for two bars uh, and then to, you know, scene number eight or whatever. Now, uh, let me give you an example of um, two different ways, if I may. So there's something called uh, scene chain, which I, I'm going to put on right now. What happens with this is it will go through the different scenes in the order that I've selected, okay? And then I can just jam free time. Uh, and then I'll get to how I can influence that in a sec. So let me just quickly show you. This is the first patch. Second one is just a drum beat. Third one has got a cool little bass line. And incidentally, I played all these in uh, with the internal sounds here. Four is a different groove. And then I really mix it up with this, this little get your freak on groove. <laughs> All right. Now, so if I just let that run, I can change patches free time um, and, you know, play it as if it's like a, a song backing track. So I'll just do a short version of that. OK, and I'm going to change freely my patches. So here we go. So it's rolling through the patches, right? Yeah. So you can hear it's rolling through in that order that I've preset, but I think where it gets uh, a little bit more cool for me and what I what I did um, in the first video was I can change like scene one, scene two, scene seven, scene 11. You can move through the arrangement and sit on, on a pad, sit on a, on a scene. Correct. Um, with my with the MS3. Now, just to make it really, really clear. So each patch, when I change sound, there's a little message which is called patch MIDI. I can say play scene three and that's loaded inside the patch, for example. So here's my first patch, right? That's my first patch with um, scene one. When I go to patch two, it's this kind of cool bass wah thing. Now, what's cool about this is that 
you know, I can just keep that going if I want to. I don't have to, you know, uh, let it roll and then go into the next scene. I can just keep grooving on that when I want to. If I, I could go back to patch one and go back to the original groove or I can go to patch three, change my guitar sound and the scene of the groove box as well. So let me give you an example. So here's uh, patch one, scene one here. And uh, I'll talk you through it as I go. <laughs> See, now it's still going around a, a second time. Scene two. Uh. Uh. Now, see what I'm saying? I just want to groove on this so I can keep it going. Now I want to go to scene three. Here we go. Let's go to scene four. I'm going to change patch. Now let me go back a few scenes. I went back to scene two. Uh, uh scene one maybe. Etc. So, the implications are yeah. um, monumental. Watching you, first of all, that was wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> and what really hits me watching that is this was a completely different musical event than what you posted a yeah. few days ago. We're exactly. using the same scenes, and yet you're as a as a player, you are interacting with the moment. You're interacting yeah. with how long you want to have a scene on for swapping stuff. Yeah. The ambient thing comes on at a different moment. So it's really kind of an infinite, it's an infinite tool for creating these different musical events. I also realized for the first time here, this is a there's potential collabor collaborative implications here too. You could play with another player and be moving through stuff like a as a band behind well, you. Exactly. And uh, again, as I tried to mention in my uh, video, uh, also thinking of the potential, um, you know, a thing that came to my mind was, yeah, if you have a drummer that's playing live, you know, they could have it monitored in their ear. They don't even have to send those grooves out to the PA, although they could. They could play along to loops, right? And they'd be perfectly in time, but also all of your guitar effects would be in time. And then, you know, you could jam, you know, have the bass only in there. Do you know what I mean? If it was just like a, say the white stripes, but uh, on acid, you know what I mean? <laughs> with 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 the bass uh, and in free time, you can just say, whoa, let's go to this section, bam, and hit it in. It, that's what I, that's what occurred to me. I'm like, well, okay, so it's, this is like a new improvisational partner when it's just you and the and the group box. Um, and yeah. it's like having a, a second person, but then you add a third, like another human. All of a sudden, it's like sort of an exponential thing. So let's talk about some of the tones. You kind of hit on them a little bit. Um, some of your guitar yeah. tones. So, okay, first of all, there's there's kind of a wide range here. How do you achieve, say, that nasty octave synth? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll tell you what, let me load up um, uh, the other project. Uh, basically, th uh, that the one I just played right there, um, that was the um, the very first thing that I came up with. So um, I'm always a big fan of like your fir one's first impressions of well, of anything, of a person, of some gear, 
of whatever of some food you know um that first impression is really important so when i uh got that groove box that first thing i came up with was the very first thing that came out you know patch one sounds that were pretty much preloaded in and i just had fun with it then i came up with this track and that's where i started to mess with the effects a little bit more so let me let me load up the the sounds so um this track is a little bit faster, a bit more upbeat. Uh, let me check that we're on the right page here. Uh, let's see. This is the first groove. That's right, the drum bass thing. Oh yeah, this, this is a whole different sequence, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I wanted to kind of start off gentle. I love this sort of effect. I actually was gonna ask you about that atmospheric ambient. Yeah, so this was a, yeah, this was an effect um, that I came up with on the MS3 where, um, you know, in all the Boss products, you can have multiple assigns, which means uh, multiple things happening at once. So in this uh, patch, I've got like three or four delays or something. I can't remember exactly, but a lot, you know, um, and I can um, interact with them with the volume pedal. And in fact, even if I press it again, I didn't do it on the video, but it does... Um, like a more distorted tone, I'll show you. So like, uh. and then I can, you know, uh. Endless swirl. It's so yeah. nice. It's so nice. Thanks. You use it really skillfully um, in that first video, sort of an intro and an outro, and it kind of made me think, oh yeah, this is really what when you're using multiple products like this. If you have a setting that's that dramatic, and then you also have these really colorful dramatic scene chains, it sounds like you know, like a like a planned performance. Yeah. When you definitely. drop out, and there's that thing happening. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I wanted to kind of start with that, and I love that patch that I created on here. Uh, and then again, like say the dramatic drum and bass uh, kicks in, right? Same thing that we just mentioned about the principle, right? I can, if I want to, go to the next patch with with just some bass stabs. Bum. One, two, three, and bum, bum. Okay. Then the next one. Some strings added. Okay, then it, it kicks in half time. So so far, all that's happening is I got my fast drum beat, the bass line. Then that on scene two, on scene three, I add the strings. On scene four, I keep the bass and strings and just change the groove half time. And then on scene five, I add an instrument. Check this out. Okay. What is that little, is, it, is that from within the, the sound library? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so let's see now. I think that's on uh, this uh, instrument here. Oh no, next one. Yeah, so basically you can play them uh, here. These are the strings. Okay. Um, oh, there, that's, this is a nice sound. Oh, it's almost like a lap steel theremin through a yeah. <laughs> it's actually a woodwind instrument that I uh, I morphed with effects, you know. Very you know? cool. Um, so this is, I believe, this is that uh, piano sounding, but up an octave. And you're doing like court, you're doing chordal voicings and stuff like that. So all yeah. that is possible with it. Right that's now. a that's something a lot of folks don't know about the group box um, is that it is absolutely just a different way of playing chords, but it's still all your musical knowledge applies still. Yeah, still absolutely. making a seventh. You're still doing all that stuff. It's just, a, it's not a, a piano. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's a pad based yeah. approach. Yeah, but it's fun. You know, it's pretty intuitive because it's it's kind of set out like a, a keyboard, you know. So yeah. uh, as long as you, you have some keyboard knowledge, you'll, you'll be absolutely great. Um, so, yes, yeah, so after that, then I had this crazy other effect on the MS-3, which I love. 
So I kind of was grooving on that. So then when I kick in with the uh, with that first groove and then the bass kicks in, I can go one, two, three. Then, were you bringing the strings in there too? Did you move? Did you move through that at well, a certain point, or was it scene well, chaining? This is scene chain now. Love that. That was so cool. So I can just turn that off, and now I can do it myself, right? So um, the first, uh, let me see now. I'll make it clear. So I'll keep that same example that we just had on scene two, and then I'll kick in. Let me see now. Yes. Okay. Right, so I'll bring in the strings this time. So check this out. So here we go. So just keep it going. Now. So half time and strings. Etc. Et so, at this point, awesome. that I have planned my patches in the MS3 in a particular order that I like, and I have told each one which scene I want it to play at any given time. So now I'm effect effectively on the sixth patch on my pedal, but I've decided to go back to scene two. Do you see what I mean? So I've got a different guitar tone, but I've told it I want to hear scene two again. So that's what I just did there. Is that so? Is that um, octave synth that kind of auto wah thing that you use during the hip hop section? Are those all MS three tones? Are some of them manipulated? No, okay. okay, this is where so, yeah I can get to that. So um, every guitar tone you've heard so far is from the MS uh, three, right? <laughs> But um, the final thing that I've been thinking about maybe putting up is uh, something where I'm using guitar to MIDI, where I'm able to control the sound. So perhaps I should quickly load it up. Um, if I if I go in here, let me see now. Yes. Um, and uh, OK, cool. So I'm going to change guitar. And this is something that I've been experimenting with. I, I haven't written a track just yet, but I'm 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 thinking that might be my next plan. Right. So excuse me a second. So now I've got this plugged into, in fact, let me just plug it in. Uh, I've got, it's a bit off screen, but I've got my MIDI cable here and I can plug into the back uh, from my, uh, from my uh, SY1000. So this guitar allows me to trigger the sounds. So this, this is cool. So I can now play the sounds from the M, C. Okay, I can. can That's just go crazy. Through. Yeah, a few different ones. <laughs> uh, now let me see now. Uh, let's load in a different one. Uh, well, uh, that is a pure synth tone. Yeah, right. yeah. I love that. It's very soft. And and if you look, I can do the really bracket. sounds like a synth. So that's me doing that. If I just play it straight, you know, it's quite boring. But I can. Uh, okay, now check this sound out. This that's is crazy. This is one that I'm definitely gonna use because it sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, so I'm definitely into That's that. That's awesome. Um, 
And that's really traditionally, that's the kind of stuff that you start digging around those group box libraries. You're going to find oh, tons oh. of Roland D synth yeah. goodness like that. Exactly. And I've not even started yet, but you know, this is going to be cool. Like, and then I kick into the other side. You know, like I said, I haven't even got into it yet, but uh, there's a few more. Again, feel that, hear that vibrato. It sounds like you're jogging the pitch bend wheel of a synth. That's yeah. what's really crazy about it. Yeah. It's kind of like a Winwood synth tone. You know what I mean? Like from I'm thinking of like some of the like Valerie and some of those kind of it's like it's totally not a traditional guitar sound. Oh god, no, 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 absolutely. Uh and then there's one final one which I uh I was playing around with. So I've got it really tuned down low, so it's like a bass, you know. So again, just to be clear, these are sounds inside uh, the MC, which um, it's just cool that I can control it all from here. And sorry. So uh, this is so, oh no no so now you're using the SY one thousand at this yeah, point. You're yeah, kind of yeah. you're routing differently. Are you bypassing the MS three entirely? Yeah yeah exactly. I just crazy. You have a whole different setup now. Yeah yeah yeah. So I got my synth thing uh, here. I mean I don't know if I can maybe pull it over a little bit so you can see okay. the guitar synth there. Yep. Okay. Love it. Um, and uh, and that's what this guitar is plugged into, you know. Well, and, I appreciate uh, you giving us this pre. I know this is a sort of a preview of coming attractions here. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, at the beginning, I'm always um, I'm always interested in just I experimenting and letting the gear um, kind of influence my inspiration. And because I do love synth sounds, now a lot of people know me for i don't know like a variety of guitar playing like either shred guitar or like jazz fusion stuff which i love you know and um obviously i did the 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 prog uh tour with steven as well um but but this side of me you know i do love synths i, I like that sound and i've i've always wanted to um sort of strive to get that on the guitar you know and so yeah boss have always been at the forefront and roland of creating the guitar synth stuff so it's, it's always an honor to be uh you know part of the the process really absolutely and I, i'm reminded of jeff beck who who also famously um really embraced electronica in a very mm. natural way with with instrumental music and with guitar playing it was like it's he didn't see the differences he was like yeah i love music I love doing exactly. that, you know. Um, so speaking of guitarists, uh, so, you, so you got this MC-707 here. The MC-707 is part of this group box series. There's its sibling, the 101, which is sort of the, 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 the smaller version of this. Let's say you're a new player kind of putting together a rig. Do you see this as being relevant, to, like this type of um, setup to a, a player who wants to experiment with MIDI? Like, would this be a good way to get into it? Possibly. Yeah, I, I think, you know, as a palette, um, it's really cool. If if you're into uh, electronic sounds and uh, that kind of stuff, uh, I think, yeah, like you say, that's the kind of smaller brother, isn't it? The, the They're the same. They're, they're kind of like, the, it's like sort of big daddy and then the little one, but it's the same library. So all those yeah. those tones you were finding, that, that's, that's sort of Roland Zen core family of, of sort of cross pollinated tones that you that you can use between cool. different yeah 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 that's what i thought yeah so that's good so i would imagine that the functionality is pretty much the same i think it's similar, um, yeah, yeah. yeah and so therefore yeah you have all those 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 sounds um and yeah i think you know music is always always moving forward and developing and um sure. you know what i think what i love about roland uh well and boss really is that they're not stuck in the past, you know, they, they want to move forward. Now, you know, we all love having, you know, old 60s and 70s valve amps and all that stuff, of course, because yeah. that's what we we grew up listening to, you know. Um, and But I've just not been afraid to look at the future of, of stuff as well. And I think um, 
yeah, it's cool to 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 meld it all together, and this is a a great way of getting modern sounds, uh, you know, in in your music, really. I love it. Um, and your latest, okay, so your latest video, which you spoke about earlier, you kind of beat me to the punch, which is great. Um, the the why use MIDI in your guitar rig video? Yeah, yeah. You provide these really compelling examples that really spoke to me as a player about how you could expand your sound. The first was those tempo sync delays you mentioned. They're mm -hmm. very seductive. They just sound so perfect and you slow it down and you're doing tap tempo with your foot and everything is locked. And then yes. there's this timed, do these timed tremolo chords, which yeah. is sort of a musical obsession for me. Like when you hear like a tremolo chord in perfect time, mm -hmm. it's like such a rad thing. And yeah, this could these be maybe introduction points for guitarists who are just kind of like oh yeah maybe there's more to this midi stuff than i thought yeah well i hope you know? so yeah because like i say uh i think with guitar players often misconstrue the word midi um because like i just showed then that's what a lot of people think of midi and i whilst i think that's cool uh, like the traditional players uh sort of shy away from that style of 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 playing however the video you just mentioned, you know, how to use MIDI in your guitar rig or something like that, um, is not about triggering stuff. It's about um, it's about connecting it, like you just mentioned. So your time-based effects, whether it's delay, tremolo, or perfectly in sync with the music, really. And whether that's live or at home or recording or whatever, the fact is, I've always, you know, for example, let's say you've got an old little tremolo pedal. That's great. But when you set the rate and it's like, well, 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 you have to listen to the music, kind of set it and, and hope it's right. And if you're recording, that's cool because you can pretty much get it bang on and record it. But when you're playing live, the, the drummer is very unlikely to keep that tempo unless he's, you know, or, or she's playing to a metronome uh, or, you know, or, or something like that. And not every band has that setup, you know, so this is a way that you could possibly get that into a live setup and encourage your drummer uh, or whatever to play to some grooves um, and you could expand the sound of the band because you know even if you're doing a cover band like a function band and doing like wedding gigs or whatever you could produce some sounds that maybe are on records that you wouldn't necessarily be able to be able to do on guitar or you know your yep. keyboard player if you might not even have a keyboard player in which case you could definitely use this to to help um and yeah with the added benefit that all your effects will be always in time with the music yeah these are all really uh like it's a really interesting non-traditional use cases for for the group box it's like people often think of some of these rolling products as being edm oriented mm -hmm. or uh, or hip-hop oriented where it's really music oriented the sounds are the sounds are cross genre there's a, and you're using it in this totally different way than I've seen used. So yeah. Al, thank you, Alex, for, 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 for taking this time to kind of walk through those. This is, I feel like this is really innovative yeah. work, work you're doing with, um, with this gear and with your playing. It's really, it's pretty, pretty amazing combination. So thank you for your time. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Right on. Cheers, man.